The book of Ezra, with a word of wisdom from our Father, in Jesus' name, verse 1. Now, in the first year of Cyrus, king of Persia, that the word of the Lord by the mouth of Jeremiah might be fulfilled, the Lord stirred up the spirit of Cyrus, king of Persia, that he made a proclamation throughout all his kingdom, and put it also in writing, saying, Thus saith Cyrus, king of Persia, The Lord God of heaven hath given me all the kingdoms of the earth, and he hath charged me to build him an house at Jerusalem, which is in Judah. And this is what Gabriel was speaking of in the book of Daniel, chapter 9, when he said, From the going forth of the commandment to restore and to build Jerusalem, that's what we're reading of in Ezra, Unto the Messiah, the Prince, Jesus Christ, the Lord Jesus Christ, shall be seven weeks and threescore and two weeks. The street shall be built again, and the wall, and we'll read of that in the book of Nehemiah, even in troublous times. After threescore and two weeks shall Messiah be cut off, but not for himself, and the people of the Prince that shall come shall destroy the city and the sanctuary, and the end thereof shall be with a flood, and unto the end of the war desolations are determined. And he shall confirm the covenant with many, Satan shall, is who we're talking about, this lowercase p prince, talking about Daniel's 70th week, which is yet future, a seven-year-long week of years shortened to a five-month period, in the middle of which Satan will appear as the false Christ, and at the beginning of that five months he shall confirm the covenant with many for one week. It was seven years, now it's five months. And in the midst of the week, that's the sixth seal, the sixth trumpet, and the sixth vial, he shall cause the sacrifice and the oblation to cease, and for the overspreading of abominations he shall make it desolate. That abomination of desolation Christ spoke of in Mark 13 and Matthew 24, Satan appearing in Jerusalem as the false Christ to his own children, the Kenites, even until the consummation and that determined shall be poured upon the desolate. So going back to Ezra, this is that commandment to restore and rebuild Jerusalem. And in this book of Ezra, we're going to count those stones worn smooth over a long period of time, as it's written in Revelation chapter 13, 18. If you look up that word count, that's what it means, to enumerate stones worn smooth over a long period of time. And those stones are the Kenites. And by tracing the Kenites, the sons of Cain, throughout God's word, all the way back to the garden, you see the rock that these smaller stones came from. You ever heard the term chip off the old block? Well, it applies here. Inasmuch as Satan is that rock, the false rock, called the king of Tyrus, in the book of Ezekiel, chapter 28, Tyrus means rock. He's the false rock, not the true rock. He's the false Christ. And the Kenites, you'll see in this book of Ezra, the Nethanim, and how they infiltrated the priesthood, becoming even the Pharisees of the Gospels, those who had Christ crucified. The Kenites carrying out the negative part of God's plan. And that's even fulfilling the first prophecy of God's word in Genesis 3.15 the enmity between the woman seed and the serpent seed, that is to say the children of the devil, the Kenites. And here we have the documentation of how they infiltrated the priesthood here in Ezra. And this goes back to Joshua chapter 9, how they were cursed to be hewers of wood and drawers of water for the house of God. And because of this, they eventually will infiltrate the priesthood. So returning to Ezra And chapter 1, verse 3, Who is there among you of all his people, his God be with him, and let him go up to Jerusalem, which is in Judah, and build the house of the Lord God of Israel? He is the God which is in Jerusalem. And this Cyrus, being one of the few people God named himself and prophesied the coming of 137 years before the fact, and he would free the children of Judah, from the captivity of Babylon, the king of Babylon being a type of Antichrist. So this looks forward and is very important to us in this generation of the fig tree, which began in 1948. 
And whosoever remaineth in any place where he sojourneth, let the man of his place help him with silver and with gold and with goods and with beasts beside the free will offering for the house of God that is in Jerusalem. Then rose up the chief of the fathers of Judah and Benjamin, those two tribes to the south that were taken into captivity by King Nebuchadnezzar into Babylon, which means confusion, and the priests and the Levites. Why would it say the priests and the Levites? The Levites are supposed to be the priests. So pay attention to what's being said there, the priests and the Levites, because you're going to find out there are many priests who aren't Levitical. And that goes against God's instructions. The Levites are supposed to be the priesthood. And you see already how the priesthood was infiltrated by the sons of Cain. And with them whose spirit God had raised to go to build the house of the Lord, which is in Jerusalem. And all they that were about them strengthened their hands with vessels of silver and with gold, with goods and with beasts and with precious things, beside all that was willingly offered. Also Cyrus, which means son in the Hebrew, the king brought forth the vessels of the house of the Lord, which Nebuchadnezzar, type of Antichrist, had brought forth out of Jerusalem and had put them in the house of his gods, lowercase g. Even those did Cyrus, king of Persia, bring forth by the hand of Mithridath, the treasurer, and numbered them unto Sheshbazar, the prince of Judah. And this is the number of them, thirty chargers of gold, a thousand chargers of silver, nine and twenty knives, thirty basins of gold, silver basins of a second sort, four hundred and ten, and other vessels a thousand. And all the vessels of gold and silver were five thousand and four hundred, all these did Sheshbazar bring up with them of the captivity that were brought up from Babylon unto Jerusalem. And you're going to find out that true Judah is very scarce in number here, and there are many Nethanims, which means those given to service. And this will go back to the time of Solomon. And again, keep in mind, Revelation 13, 18, Here is wisdom. Let him that hath understanding count the number of of the beast, that means to enumerate stones worn smooth over a long period of time, for it is the number of a man. What man? That man of sin, spoken of in Second Thessalonians chapter 2. He's called a man in Isaiah 14, Lucifer is, as well as Ezekiel chapter 28. He's called a man there as well. Doesn't mean human. The man here is Satan, and his number is 600, three score and six, because he appears in Jerusalem to his own children, the Kenites, at the sixth seal, the sixth trumpet, and the sixth vial. And his number is 600, three score, and six. And we'll even see that number in the next chapter. So that's what I mean by we're going to go through this book of Ezra and count those stones worn smooth over a long period of time, tracing the Kenites all the way back to the garden and up until now even. And when you know who the Kenites are, you know who Satan will appear Two, when he appears as the false Christ. And there you have it, the book of Ezra chapter 1.